Hello friends, welcome to another day of Q&A's, joined by my lovely and helpful wife Lucy. Hi okay. guys. Lucy will be asking me a question of yours from Instagram. So the next one is by Christina Cain. Hi Leo, odd question I come across this week. Thoughts on ice bath and cold shower showers for longevity and performance benefits. I've read that it increased brown fat activity and reduced mTOR signaling. Any legitimacy or practical applications? Thank you Lucy. Let's talk about the cold a little bit. So, uh, first of all, before we talk about the cold, we have to talk about something called uncoupling proteins. Uh, they're uh, in g genetic forms, they're called UCP1 to UCP5. We know the most about UCP1, we know a little bit about UCP2. Uh, what these uncoupling proteins do is they uncouple oxidative phosphorylation from ATP in the mitochondria, allowing the mitochondria, at least for UCP1, to become more thermogenically active, meaning mm -hmm. produce more heat. So. The, the reason why we talk about this is that the UCP, UCP1 particularly is found in white fat, white adipose tissue, which is called WAT, and it's also found in brown fat, brown adipose tissue, which is called BAT. It's found in about 20% the rate in white fat as compared to brown fat, mm -hmm. so it's much less common there. Um, now, the, the thing that got longevity people really excited about the subject was oh, this noisy dog. What, what it got uh, longevity people excited about the subject originally was a landmark paper done in the last 10 years. I don't know which, day, which year exactly, but basically in this paper, what they did was they took rodents and they added extra UCP2 genes mm -hmm. in the hypothalamus. The, and what this did was cause the hypothalamus to become hotter which made the mouse think that it was hotter than it really is, which made the mouse reduce its body temperature. And then the mice lived longer. Interesting. So this was very exciting. And just taking this study alone, you would think, oh, this is fantastic. This means that reducing my body temperature may be, make me live longer. And so there have been a lot of, and just some background, there has been a lot of theories. So there's a kind of longevity protocol called caloric restriction. It's been shown across animals, as I mentioned in other videos, that res re restricting their calories while they're not vitamin and nutrient deficient leads them to living longer lives. Usually the smaller animal lives the, gr gets the greatest increase in life, whereas larger animals like dogs and apes get a little bit less reduction, less increase. Um, in caloric restriction, there have been theories that the reason that caloric restriction works is by reducing their body temperature. Because when they eat less, they actually become cold. And this is well known. Mm. If you meet a cal calorically restricted person, he'd be wearing a sweater in the summertime because he's cold. He has no body fat. And he's, and he's not eating much. So the body reduces the metabolic rate. So it's been theorized that reducing that metabolic rate could be causing people to live longer. And this falls into an old theory, actually, which is that energy expenditure, the more someone expends energy, the quicker they die. So this was a very old theory, which has sort of been dis somewhat disproven in, in various studies. Now, with that said, so this all sounds exciting. Like, oh yeah, if I make myself colder, uh, then I'm gonna live longer. But this is not really the case. So there's a, there's a lot of studies that are not so, so for example, fish that live in cold water live longer than fish that live in hot water. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are some things that confirm this uh, belief, but there's a lot of rodent studies where they made rodents either uh, immerse themselves in cold water for four hours a day, or uh, live under uh, lower ambient temperatures for extended periods. And while the rodents did get more brown fat or they lost uh, body fat or they expended more energy or they were a little bit metabolically healthier, they didn't live longer. I see. So it's not completely clear that this makes people live longer. It's, it's because the only that transgenic mouse with the UCP2 in the brain actually lived longer. Mm. So it's not so clear. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of thought on this subject. So let's move away from the longevity aspect, and now let's get into this idea of metabolic health. He talked about performance benefits. I mean, there may be performance benefits for inflammation and stuff like that, but this people talk about a lot. Let's talk about something interesting, which is metabolic health. The reason why the cold is critical or important for metabolic health is is this idea of the uncoupling proteins and brown fat. We're all born with a certain amount of brown fat. And by the way, the amount of brown fat that you're born with can depend on how much omega-3s your mother was taking while you were in the womb. The more DHA and EPA she takes, there are genetic, epigenetic changes that occur in the baby and he stores more brown fat when he's born. Brown fat is brown because it's mitochondria rich. That's why it looks brown. 
technically. So the thing about, about originally it was thought like 25 years ago, it was thought that we're all born with a certain amount of brown fat and it can't change during our lifetimes. But later, they discovered that this brown fat can turn, uh, uh, white fat can turn brown fat through certain stimuli. And now, as the years go by, we've accrued such a long list of stimuli that I will probably not remember what the, I mean, I won't even remember half of the list in this video. Maybe I'll include a, a list here or something. Maybe not. I don't know. But it depends on how much time I have because we're moving. That's why. But the point is, it's been discovered that white fat can be turned brown. They call this browning of mm -hmm. fat. And the, the fat that's, that's, what happens originally is you have white fat and a little bit of brown fat grows in it. They call this beige, which uh, they either call it beige or bright, which is brown in white. Mm -hmm. So this is when it's starting to turn brown. Now, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So the, the, the way this works biochemically is that the sympathetic nervous tone stimulates, uh, sends ad, uh, adrenergic signaling to the mitochondria in the brown fat that activates the mitochondria and the brown fat to create thermogenic effects. So it's adrenaline that causes this activation of thermogenesis in the brown fat. But it's also adrenaline that causes the white fat to turn brown. It's mm -hmm. the same mechanism. So if you take, for example, a beta blocker, you reduce the amount that you're going to get this effect. In fact, it's particularly the I think it's the beta, it's the uh, the um, beta three receptor, the adrenergic beta three receptor that is most involved. But don't quote me on that; I'm not completely certain. But anyway, it's, a, it's an adre uh, adrenergic system that does this. Now, so taking a drug like ephedrine or clenbuterol, or uh, uh, there's a couple of other drugs that are norepinephrine and uh, and dopamine reuptake inhibitors that are known as appetite suppressants. Mm -hmm. All these drugs, because they in inhibit norepinephrine reuptake, or the other drugs because they directly agonize the adrenergic receptors, which is what ephedrine does and clenbuterol, they direct their stimulants, they directly the agonize the receptors. Mm -hmm. These will increase the rate that the brown fat develops. But so will a bunch of other things. PPA, PPAR alpha agonists will do it as well. Um, interestingly, bile, so bile bile fluids which are released when you eat fat will cause this effect as well uh, through a complicated biochemical mechanism but so so this is one reason researchers theorize that eating more fats not just because of the omega-3 part also by the way, olive oil will increase it not just uh, fish uh, not just fish oil so olive oil fish oil but also having more bile uh, bile acids in general due to consuming fats will increase the rate that this is done. So, so researchers will theorize that having a fat heavy diet will increase the rate that the brown fat is accumulating in your body. Now, the problem with these direct adrenergic agonists like ephedrine or any of these other things that we're talking about is that, oh, by the way, also I should mention like, I'm just trying to remember different kinds of things. So TDE5 inhibitors, which are like Cialis or Viagra will also do this. Interesting. Yeah, I was just thinking of different things. So, but the problem with having a direct stimulant of the adrenergic receptors is that those things tend to be harmful for the cardiovascular system. Mm. What's not harmful for the cardiovascular system is being in the cold. Even though it does cause an adrenaline release and stuff like that, it's not necessarily harmful for the cardiovascular system. With that said, let me, let me make a, a, a note. If you put yourself in what's, what's like chronic difficult stress in the cold you will cause when you go in the cold and you're not acclimated you will cause a cortisol release if you put yourself in very cold conditions and not allow yourself to get adapted and keep doing that that's going to be unhealthy nice. but if you adapt yourself to the cold you have to do it slowly exactly yeah, yeah. and you can and i wish we had monitors for salivary cortisol in our house so they, they were something like that because then you could actually test it so you would go and go out in the cold for a bit wearing like uh, gloves and a hat but no shirt for example get yourself cold and check your cortisol what it is in your saliva the the and then match it so increase your time while not increasing the cortisol release but adapting like that there is a human study that shows that people who stay out in the cold uh, will uh, uh, there's a, like an experimental study it's a wonderful study they put people out in the cold for certain times each day and found that they gained brown fat or they 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 got browning of white fat mm. so but there's there's a lot of other things that do this as well um 
I'm not remembering all of them right now, but there's a lot of little things that do it. For example, they've given raspberries to people on a high fat diet and it increased the browning. Um, I think linolenic, linoleic acid as well did it. Um, uh, metformin did it because uh, the AMP kinase pathway also does this through its effect on the, on the sympathetic nervous tone. AMP kinase pathway increases the sympathetic nervous tone mm -hmm. mildly. So metformin does this as well, and that's I think maybe what he's referring to with the mTOR, probably the AMP kinase is becoming dominant, reducing the mTOR. But so basically, I'm not gonna get into too much detail here, but what I'm trying to say is this. This, although it's hopeful, the idea that people living in, uh, or having a lower body temperature for their lives, there is theoretical reason to think it may uh, make people live longer, but the animal studies are, the, you know, only the transgenic one works. I see. But there's no question that having more brown fat is healthy. And I, I didn't even explain why, which is this. Brown fat causes uh, glucose uptake out of the bloodstream because it's thermically active. So it basically raises your metabolism. So it gets glucose, sugar out of the bloodstream, and it also does that for triglycerides, fats. So uh, it's been shown to be preventative against uh, having higher brown fat is correlated with less visceral fat, less metabolic syndrome, better insulin sensitivity, basically all of the metabolic effects. It's also correlated to some cardiovascular health aspects, but more limitedly. And so basically it, it can be shown that having more brown fat makes you more metabolically fit. Nice. It's the sort of, you can think of it like the opposite of having a fat, a fat on your liver and visceral fat. Mm -hmm. This kind of fat is good for you. The visceral fat is bad for you. And the subcutaneous white fat is probably bad for you, but not as bad as that visceral fat. So fats are of a different nature and brown fat is something you really want. Interesting. So, you know, what I would do if I was you is that I would spend some time in, um, you know, personally, the, the only thing that I do, I live in a hot climate, so I don't get to, to enjoy this as much, but I did spend a lot of time in the cold when I was younger, and I actually do have a lot of brown fat. I really do, a lot of brown fat. Not just, I'm, I'm completely certain that I have a lot of brown fat, because I used to shiver a lot and spend a lot of time outside. It's a long story, but the point is, if I was living in a colder climate right now, I would intentionally go outside and spend some time there. In fact, what I would do particularly is go outside and exercise in the cold. Because by the way, exercise also increases brown fat. That's another thing I forgot to mention because um, there's a, a compound called irisin in the muscle and exercise releases the irisin and the irisin has an effect on brown fat. So there, there's just so many things, but the ideal protocol is to have a high fat diet and to go outside in the cold and exercise there. Interesting. So you're exercising in the cold. And if you're gonna cover any part of your body, you cover your hands and your head, make sure, and your, your ears, make sure that you don't get the extremities, but keep the, uh, the core part cold, like mm -hmm. be shirtless or something like that. And this will cause you over time to accrue brown fat, which will make you more metabolically healthy. But we can't say it's gonna make you live longer. We're not completely sure. Interesting. Very oh. good. Uh, thank you for the question, Christina. We'll see you next time.